Uh, I'm happy to uh, talk about a recent uh, or a series of work based on these references written there. Uh, this is about the uh, Higgs mass, uh, sol new solution to the Higgs mass uh, problem. So let me first give you an introduction and, and then uh, I will uh, talk about uh, uh, four form flux uh, relax relaxation for Higgs mass problem. And then what is the application of four form for portals uh, for cosmology and then conclude. So uh, although this workshop is about spasmetry and unification, and there are also uh, alternative uh, solutions to the hierarchy problems. So spasmetry based on, as you know, the uh, super partners, and then pion like a composite, uh, if Higgs is a composite particle, and then if there's a classical scale invariance that you would expect that there's the light part, I mean, the, the Higgs mass is uh, given by the vacuum expectation value of light scholar. And then the, it's in the uh, natural, neutral naturalness, you might uh, could, uh, you might ex uh, impose uh, discrete symmetries uh, to impose the uh, symmetries between the standard model and the mirror sectors. And recently, uh, it's not uh, it's not recent anymore, but uh, about 60 years ago, there was an uh, interesting proposal with the cosmological relaxation to solve the uh, hierarchy problem without relying on, on any symmetry or parent symmetry. So in each of solution to the hierarchy problems, uh, we are expecting a new particles appearing not far from the electric scale. In the case of Suji, as you know, super particle masses around TV scale and the composite uh, thing is you uh, might expect the top partners uh, or row, like red states around TV scale. And in the case of scale invariance, the light uh, new particle because of the uh, approximate scale invariance, you might expect the light scala to appear. And the discrete symmetry is uh, you know, if uh, mirror symmetry is exact, then the, you expect the uh, dark Higgs and dark QCD, et cetera. And the uh, cosmological relaxation, let me focus more on this in, a, uh, in uh, later. And uh, you are expecting the action like a relaxation uh, uh, particle uh, to be expected. So, sorry. But uh, we haven't found any evidence for spot particles at the electricity as shown. Uh, in this in this list of uh, exclusion plot, and uh, also uh, and the and the searches for other new physics, there is no convincing evidence for new particles at a few TV or below, except that there are interesting anomalies recently uh, reported by Gino one ton or uh, uh, semi leptonic case of B majors or muon G minus two. Uh, nonetheless, uh, have we missed something or do we need new ideas? So uh, we need to understand particle physics problems maybe in the context of the cosmological evolution from, uh, uh, the, from the Big Bang inflation toward the current universe. That there are many things going on in this uh, cosmological relax evolution. So one interesting idea was to use uh, uh, cosmological uh, relaxation. Uh, the point is that the physical parameters, including Higgs mass, evolve in the early universe. So for instance, if you consider action like Scala uh, for symmetry region, then the, there's a linear potential, which is broken uh, shift symmetry softly, then the linear potential and uh, uh, because the uh, uh, Higgs, uh, because the uh, QCD uh, anomalies, uh, if this uh, action like particle coupled to uh, gluons, then you are inducing uh, non protopic correction to the action like particle potential, then you have oscillating uh, pattern here. Then, uh, uh, and then in this scalar particle coupled to Higgs, then uh, depending on the uh, the value of this action like Scala, the X mass uh, uh, depends on this uh, field value. So uh, when the initially you started with the uh, symmetry 
uh, symmetry uh, uh, with, uh, with the electric symmetry, then the electric symmetry is broken as soon as the Higgs mass parameter becomes negative. And then this, uh, uh, this rolling of this new scala uh, can be stopped because of the back reaction of the QCD uh, 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 non perturbative correction. Then uh, you, can, uh, you can stop the rolling of the scalar field. In this case, uh, the bottom line is that there is no new physics needed up to high scale. And, uh, and uh, optim uh, uh, optimally, uh, the new physics scale is about uh, 10 to 7 GB or so. Sorry. Uh, so the four form uh, flux, the ideal four form uh, is not new. Uh, it started uh, already uh, 80s. And the, the four form is just to uh, fill the strengths of the three form gauge field. And there's the, the, the net effect of the four form flux uh, without coupling to any particle, then uh, this four form flux uh, just from the equation motion, uh, you can solve this equation motion to get the four form flux to be uh, this uh, function Q times epsilon tensor, epsilon mu nu nu sigma. Then if you put this IP mu nu sigma back to the Lagrangian, then you will get the effective cosmological constant uh, being proportional to, to this flux parameter. So we, we feel if you have a negative cosmological constant, I mean, in this bare cosmological constant, it's negative, then you can cancel the this bare parameter to get a small or zero vanishingly small cosmological constant. So in the case of, but the, 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 but the flux is uh, quantized. So uh, if you have, there's the uh, uh, limited precision to get the cosmic constant to uh, uh, observed value. So if you have a multiple form fluxes, then uh, you can get uh, the accurate scanning of the cosmic constant as observed. So, uh, so what is the, then the, just the uh, flux parameter contribute to the cosmic constant by con just uh, shifted uh, the cosmic constant. But the, uh, if you couple the four form uh, to the three form gauge field to the, to the membrane, then the, the four form flux can be dynamical in the sense that it changes uh, by one unit by producing a uh, closed membrane as you shown this picture. And this, uh, the, uh, the dashed line is uh, the boundary between two regions. Uh, the, out, uh, the region outside is with the flux parameter Q, original flux parameter. And the, the region inside is flux, flux parameter with the Q minus uh, E. E is the uh, membrane charge. So, so as a consequence of producing closed membrane, uh, have a different backyard depending on uh, the regions. But the, there is a, because this is a quantum process, there is a probability to produce uh, this closed, closed membrane that uh, this probability depends on uh, the membrane tension and the a difference, uh, uh, the cosmic between the cosmic constant uh, inside and outside. So delta lambda is the uh, cosmic constant. And uh, so, but the, this is the, uh, uh, this the bounce action is the approximation without uh, including uh, the curvature, uh, space time curvature. So including gravity uh, curvature effect and this probability is modified by the curvature. And uh, in the end uh, uh, for large curvature approximation uh, or uh, large uh, radius of the uh, membrane, uh, spread, uh, closed membrane, then this uh, probability uh, uh, is uh, given by the exponential uh, e to the minus one over uh, effective cosmological constant. So uh, the of course the as you uh, as far as you have uh, non-zero uh, flux parameter outside a closed membrane, you can uh, so inside uh, 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 in the region of your interest. If as far as the flux parameter is sufficiently large, you can you are able to produce uh, more membranes, but the, uh, the bottom line is the probability becomes smaller and smaller 
as the cosmic constant become um, the smallest. So then uh, effectively, uh, membrane production stops when the cosmic constant reaches the true value. Then the, uh, this process membrane production stops afterwards. So what is the UV origins of four, form, uh, uh, four forms? And then uh, I think we are, uh, we know that uh, for instance, in uh, in M theory, there are M2 brain or M5 brains. Those are sources for four form proxies. Uh, in the case of M5 brain, uh, which if those are met, wrapped on three cycle in uh, compactations, and then the effective uh, uh, the membrane tension and the uh, membrane charge given by these expressions. And uh, the in in this though, I want to. Uh, make this uh, membrane tension and the membrane charge separate uh, for my purpose for scanning of the Higgs mass. So the, mem the bottom line is that it is possible to get small membrane tension and charge if the, the volume of the internal space is large or small uh, element dimensional uh, uh, Planck constant. And also, uh, if super symmetry is broken, there is no BPS like a relation between uh, tension and charge. So the uh, the small membrane charge is also technically natural. So then uh, we can uh, produce uh, 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 membranes uh, more easily if the charge is uh, small. And uh, and also uh, the four form fluxes have been used to scan the suji breaking scales as discussed for instance this paper because the uh if you you spasmetrized four form uh you have you could have non-zero f -ton, and then uh, the f -ton can uh, contribute uh, to the uh, suji break and also uh in the case of three form fluxes uh in string theory uh, it is possible to stabilize modulus moduli of uh, compactations so this is the landscape of four forms uh, in my talk, uh, but uh, let me uh, cover some of them. And uh, those are issues uh, related. Uh, and then uh, we can solve some of them at the same time, but uh, uh, I'm not aiming to solve everything uh, at once. So the physical parameters depend on four form fluxes, so-called so four form landscape. And Higgs mass scans because of the coupling to the four form flux and the cosmic constant, as I said before, can be uh, corrected because of the four form and uh, because the volume um, uh, volume um, uh, uh, coupling and the inflation, uh, even though the four form doesn't have a dynamical degree of freedom, it could be dynamical once it coupled uh, to gravity non minimally. And if uh, it couples to uh, some pseudo scalar particle, then the pseudo scalar becomes a massive. So, uh, and then this pseudo scalar can be an implacable candidate, for instance. And then, as I said, there's a suji breaking. And also, uh, if uh, 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 there are hidden sector and the visible sector communicated by four form, then it is possible to have a four form flux mediated dark matter, for instance. So, uh, I spent some time on introduction. Let me go on to discuss the main theme of these talks about uh, relaxation, four-form relaxation for Higgs mass problem. So, uh, so in the standard model, it is possible to introduce this kind of uh, dimensionless parameter between uh, coupling between uh, four-form F mu nulo sigma and the Higgs field. So CH is a dimensionless parameter. So, and then uh, if you uh, integrate out this F mu nulo sigma, it's like a F term or D term in cosmetic models, then yeah, you are end up with the change in the effective cosmetic constant and the Higgs mass parameter by this Q uh, flux parameter. And also uh, the effective uh, Higgs quartic coupling is also shifted, but uh, uh, I think the phenomenologically there is no difference, just the, the matter of de defining the bare uh, Higgs quartic coupling. So this main uh, change is this, the effective cosmic constant and the Higgs mass. And then the, the, if, you have, if you turn on one flux, then you can change CC and the Higgs mass at the same time. So, so this next slide, I'm showing you the how 
to scan Higgs mass and the CC at the same time. So the bottom line is Higgs mass parameter is relaxed to a true value when the CC stops changing near zero. So initially you can start it from uh, effective Higgs mass about Planck scale and the effective cosmic constant about Planck scale. Then you can scan. As you scan, uh, as you change flux parameter by producing a membrane, you are reducing the cosmic constant and the Higgs mass at the same time. And then the cosmic constant reaches true value, then the membrane equation starts. Then the Higgs mass uh, determined to be uh, a true value, Higgs mass parameters, max parameter is determined to be, to be true value. Uh, once you uh, choose the membrane choice about electric scale. Otherwise, uh, uh, you are end up with a too large value or too small value. So we need to choose the membrane charge about that size uh, without a further fine tuning. And then in this process, uh, the bell parameter, bell cosmic constant to be tuned to get the vanishingly small cosmic constant. So this is the problem of this scenario. You need to rely on the fine tuning in the cosmic constants. Once you accept that, then there's, it might be a solution to the hierarchy problem. So uh, here, uh, but the, in this case, uh, uh, at, in the every stage uh, before, or let's say after membrane nucleation, you are in the digital phase with, with a certain cosmic constant. After further nucleation of membrane, you are in a, another uh, digital phase with a different cosmic constant, reduced. But the uh, your series of digital phases, and, uh, and the point is that uh, what is the maximum energy in this scenario? Because the series of digital uh, phases, the previously uh, produced particles will be diluted. So what is important is the what is the fate of the last digital phase? Uh, when there's no electric symmetry breaking because the effective Higgs mass is equal to zero. And uh, you have a large effective cosmic constant and the last uh, digital phase. After uh, last membrane equation, you are reaching almost zero cosmic constant, but uh, the electric, electric symmetry is broken. And then the, uh, you can infer that uh, what is the value of the, uh, the cosmic constant in the last uh, digital phase? This is given by this expression. This is the uh, crit uh, the membrane charge times uh, critical uh, value of the flux parameter uh, for which the effective cost effective Higgs mass vanishes. Then this, I think the electric scale square, Planck scale square. Uh, then uh, if uh, this vacuum energy is convert is uh, you can uh, get the Hubble parameter from this uh, vacuum energy in the last two digital phase. Then the Hubble scale in the during the last digital phase is about 100 GB. If this uh, potential energy is converted completely to radiation, then you are, can estimate the maximum reaching temperature is about 10 to 9 GB. So that is the energy bound in this scenario. Uh, but the uh, uh, in the standard model, uh, there's uh, I think that I'm going to talk about how to reheat the universe after series of these stuff phases. Uh, but the, uh, as I said before, uh, we can, in principle, we can produce particles in certain uh, distal phase. But uh, because of the long duration of nucleation, the produced, uh, previously produced particles will be diluted. And uh, because of that, uh, even though both Higgs mass and the cosmic constant can start to, to absorb value, the universe would be empty due to the series of digital phases. Because of that, we need reheating mechanism. Also, uh, uh, we need, uh, because of the, en because entropy uh, uh, problem, also density perturbation uh, for CMB, we need a uh, new physics, new particle in, in any case. But then let me uh, just briefly talk about, uh, uh, without introducing new particle, what is the consequence of this scenario? So, uh, because uh, the particle mass is changing uh, during uh, the last two membrane nucleation, uh, because the electric symmetry is unbroken before the last membrane nucleation, and the uh, 
quick symmetry is broken after. Because of that, standard model particles receive mass after the last uh, membrane nucleation or phase transition. So you can parameterize the uh, uh, time dependent mass in this form uh, with a uh, hyperbolic tangent. And this kappa is called the last nucleation rate. And then in the case of Borges, you can calculate the number density per mole in this form. And here, this MB is the particle mass for boson. And therefore, uh, you can uh, estimate uh, what is the uh, number density uh, produced uh, particles. And in terms of this uh, effective uh, temperature. And this, once you produce standard model particles, they will summarize instantaneously. Then you can define the rhythmic temperature. So this is the plot of the reading temperature uh, as a function of this uh, last nucleation rate kappa. So if a kappa is larger than 10 to the minus four, the reading temperature will be larger than about uh, 10 MeV. It is uh, uh, okay for uh, Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Uh, and then, uh, but the uh, in this case, uh, as I said before, the the probability for the last transition is very suppressed unless you have a small membrane tension, although I didn't discuss in detail. So uh, naturally, I think the every scale, there's a, there are plant scale and weak scale, nothing else. Because of that, if you don't introduce intermediate scale, then the transition uh, rate for the last nucleation will be exponentially suppressed. Because of that, uh, this particle production mechanism is may not be efficient. Because of that, we may need to introduce new physics. So, if uh, how to how to realize uh, uh, reheating? I think that the one scenario is to introduce a uh, new scalar trapped in the minimum of the potential, so force minimum, force vacuum, and it turns after the membrane creation, and it may be. Uh, uh, realizing inflation and rating at the same time, but I haven't worked on this in detail. And also, uh, a rating is possible if the uh, potential for certain scalar field depends on flux parameter, for flux. But before the last membrane creation, it has certain minimum, but this minimum changes uh, because of the uh, flux change. Uh, because of that, you can start it from uh, kind of uh, misalignment uh, after the uh, 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 last membrane creation and setting the initial condition for the rolling uh, of the scalar field. So it's like an actual like particle, but uh, for different region, the, the, it is possible to have misalignment uh, so that you, you could have reheating. Mm -hmm. So I'm focusing on this latter scenario uh, in my talk. Uh, so, so this is the, uh, the what is new in, in my uh, work is to in, uh, generalize the uh, four form coupling by including this non-minimal coupling to gravity. So initially, as I said, the four form, uh, if you introduce a uh, four form flux, there is no dynamical vigor freedom. But if you couple this to gravity, then you are generating extra scalar field, which is the sigma field here with a certain potential here. So once you actually this uh, R square term is needed because of the stability of the additional scalar field. So once this uh, psi uh, is greater than this uh, gravity coupling C1, then we have a stable scalar, field, scalar uh, potential. And this extra scalar may be responsible for inflation and reheating. Uh, the effective scalar potential in the Einstein frame can be written in this simple form. But there are uh, several exponential potentials and the uh, effective parameters in this uh, potential. But the bottom line is that uh, there's a minimum of the uh, new scalar field depending on, depending on this uh, the flux parameter. So this flux parameter Q and the lambda effective is also depends on the flux parameter. So once you reach the true minimum, lambda effective vanishes, then uh, you only have this uh, a quad, a quadratic form of the new scalar field, which has a minimum, and we are reaching the true vacuum. So because the scalar valve shift after the last membrane, 
nucleation. And uh, we can uh, start it uh, from, uh, start it with a large initial potential energy before the uh, last membrane nucleation. So then you can estimate the reading temperature uh, uh, here uh, from the photoactive decay of this new particle. And then it's possible to have uh, sufficiently large reading temperature in this scenario. So once, if you assume that uh, the new scalar field coupled to the standard model by gravity only, then you can think about gravitational production of dark matter. So uh, in the case of fermion dark matter, it is possible to produce it uh, from the decay of this scalar particle. And then in this case, the decay rate uh, for, to the fermions is chiral suppression, has a chiral suppression. So, so, uh, it, so therefore this fermion dark matter tends to be heavy. On the other end, in the, in the case of scalar dark matter, there is no chiral suppression. So uh, it is possible to produce them more such that uh, the uh, light scalar dark matter is favored. And the, I think the, maybe uh, I'm running out of time, but uh, let me uh, spend, uh, for, uh, for, uh, spend for, uh, a few minutes to discuss this, uh, uh, this model too. So instead of uh, pure gravity, uh, gravitational coupling, uh, we can think about new scalar field, which is a pseudo scalar. And uh, uh, with a four form coupling in this form. Then the, this is action light particle. So this is the mechanism to put, uh, to give mass to uh, action light particle because of the four form products. And then uh, you can get this, uh, the, the effective potential for phi with a uh, minimum. And this uh, Lagrangian has a shift symmetry because, because uh, you can, uh, if you shift scalar field by, by constant, you can shift the flux parameter uh, uh, appropriate by appropriate uh, constant. In this scenario, uh, quadratic inflation can be uh, realized, but uh, observationally it is ruled already by Planck observation. So because of that, uh, it, it, we are generalizing the four form uh, couplings uh, by maintaining the shift symmetry. So this is the four form uh, non-minimum coupling uh, with the minimal coupling between four form and gravity. And therefore they are inducing this kind of uh, the minimal uh, coupling to this new, uh, this uh, pseudo scalar field here, as well as R square term. If the, the coefficient of the R square term is small, then uh, we are not introducing a uh, new particle in the effective theory. We can just decouple uh, the new scalar field coming from R square. Uh, focusing on the effect of the four-form coupling to this uh, pseudo scalar field. Then you have uh, the minimum coupling to pseudo scalar field, and uh, the potential is the same as before. But because of the modification uh, in the uh, effective Planck scale, uh, it is possible to have Higgs or Starbucks light inflation in this scenario. So this is the, uh, the this is the bound from Planck data, and the right hand side is the potential shape uh, in this model. There's the plateau and the large field value, and then there's the reheating period. And the prediction is the consistent with the Planck data and the, the tends to two scale ratio can, can be observable in the future CMB experiment. And also uh, instead of using- Sorry, the we, are, field, well, we are a little bit over time, so- okay. Yeah. okay, okay, I will try to wrap up. Okay, so- uh, same as pseudo scalar field can be used for reheating and uh, the Lagrangian is the same, but the, the difference is that there's a Higgs field, Higgs field coupled to uh, the four form flux. Then you have this kind of square form of the poten effective potential for the pseudo scalar field and Higgs. And uh, in this case also, because of the mechanism of shifted vacuum expectation value, uh, we are, could have started uh, with the uh, in non-zero initial vacuum energy, and uh, we can have a reading temperature about 100 G scale. And then the, I think in this mechanism, it's natural to think about fermion dark matter, which coupled to the pseudo scalar field, and then this the pseudo scalar field communicate between standard model and the dark sector. And because of the pseudo scalar na nature of this uh, mediator, uh, there's a separation 
in the direct detection, while there is the uh, uh, observable signatures for indirect detection in this scenario. So let me just uh, skip to the conclusions. Uh, I hope that I have convinced you that the uh, uh, four form flux scenarios are interesting, although it doesn't have a dynamical degree of freedom. Uh, it could change the physical parameters in a meaningful way, in particular, his mass and the cosmic constant can be scanned at the same time because of the creation of weak scale membrane charges. And uh, sufficient reading is required in this scenario by introducing additional scalar field. And uh, I uh, il uh, illustrated uh, certain scenarios where the reading and other uh, cosmology problems can be uh, addressed. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. Very nice presentation. Um, <clears throat> the parallel sessions are about to start, but of course we can take a very quick question. <clears throat> this room will be used by the neutrino session. I think. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I apologize to the next uh, to the next chair. Uh, so, any question for our speaker? So, sorry, just a very quick one. So you mentioned that you have also the possibility of producing dark matter with the right relic abundance, purely gravitation, there is your mechanism. Yeah, yes. so, so in that case, you don't see any, any possible way to, to, to test, observe this kind of dark matter candidate, or there is some hope, some option open. So yeah, I think that I consider the thermal production of dark matter and the thermal production of dark matter. So I think that my point is that uh, it is possible to accommodate uh, both scenarios in this mm -hmm. setup. And for non-thermal dark matter, I think the situation, I don't know, the, uh, the masses case might be different, maybe depending on the scenarios. So in, our, in my case, the dark matter, fermionic dark matter is about uh, TV scale and uh, G scale scalar dark matter. So mass scales uh, might be a different. And yeah, but I don't know yeah, how to probe that. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. So I think it's time to close the, the plenary session of this morning. Thanks to everyone who, who talked and attended. So, well, for the plenary, see you again at 8 p.m. Beijing time. Uh, and then I will leave the I will leave the room to the neutrino session and enjoy your your parallel sessions too. See you later.